So one of the exciting things about the research is that we've been able to understand and digest the research results uh, enough to, to, to really make them accessible to policymakers. And that's been a goal of, of, of mine and Michael's from, from the early days. And we've been working with uh, other research centers like the Jamil Poverty Action Lab, uh, the Center for Effective Global Action and, and Evidence Action, also Innovations for Poverty Action, um, to um, uh, you know digest the results and um, present them to policymakers in in ways that really speak to the needs of policymakers and ways that are uh, you know really comprehensible to folks who are not technical experts on the science or on the research. Um, one of the things that we've done recently to to, to advance that. Uh, that, that mission even, even further is open policy analysis or OPA. The goal of OPA is to take existing research estimates and really home in on the core aspects of the research that speak to policy decisions. So in the case of say the decision of a government to um, carry out a deworming program, they're gonna be very interested in the costs of that program. They're gonna be interested in the types of, uh, you know, benefits or labor market gains that they may, uh, that their citizens may experience if the program is implemented. So what we've done working with partners uh, at SEGA and at the uh, Berkeley Initiative for Transparency in the Social Sciences is create an open policy analysis for deworming that's simple. It's like a one screen you know, one screen on your computer that boils down the key cost and benefit um, parameters and allows policymakers to customize this analysis to their own setting. So it brings in evidence from research, like the research Michael and I and co-authors have done on the labor market benefits of deworming, but also allows the policymakers to bring their own data on, for instance, what the cost of deworming could be in their own setting, in their own geography, given the worm burden uh, that they face. And by altering those parameters, get a sense of what, how these costs and benefits compare and thus whether this might be an attractive policy uh, in that setting. So, um, you know, another aspect of open policy analysis, and it's, it's right there in the name, is uh, open policy analyses are uh, analyses that folks can uh, modify on their own where the code is available for policymakers, the, the statistical code, the data is available. So it's something that's open source that they can then tweak and modify for their own needs. So I think, you know, taken together, the, you know, marrying some of the insights from the, the open source movement or the open science movement with the research on, uh, on deworming has created a powerful tool, this OPA for deworming that governments around the world can use um, when they're considering whether or not to adopt the policy. Yeah, just to build on that, we're incredibly excited about the, the power of, of OPA um, for a few, few reasons. One is, as Ted mentioned, the policy, policy advocacy. When you enter into a new country, a, a key first step is actually helping make a case to the country that deworming is worthwhile. You know, policymakers have many competing priorities for their time, for their resources, and you know, with this analysis, we can provide a clearly um, grounded uh, definition of the benefits for that country using their cost, using their worm burden. And so I think that's really critical as a first step. Second, once you're actually in country, ideally you want these governments over time to be owning uh, the financial investment for deworming programs. And so what this tool can do is actually support conversations around domestic resourcing. Uh, for example, ministries of finance play very important roles in determining the funding allocations for health programs like deworming. And with this tool, we can actually show governments how in ministries of finance, how an investment in deworming will result in an increase in an income base and then show what that can, tra can translate into in terms of increased tax revenues. And so one of the things we're looking forward to is being able to show to, to ministries of finance the financial net present value of their investments in deworming uh, to make a, a good financial case for, for those investments. And, and then I think a, a third place that we see this really helpful is, is for our own internal decision-making. Uh, because we can tweak it, because we can use data from different countries, it helps us prioritize uh, which, which are the next set of countries we wanna expand into. 
Um, and it gives us that quick snapshot of, of what the potential impact of deworming in a, in a new geography will be. I think just to add one more thing, it's been so gratifying to see how much open policy analysis has, has advanced in the last year or two and to see how enthusiastic our partners like Evidence Action and government partners are in this tool. It, you know, it really, uh, our interest in the costs and benefits of deworming go back to the original research. I mean, Michael and my, and my first paper uh, has an extended section, which is kind of unusual for uh, a lot of academic research where we lay out very practically what some of these benefits and costs are, trying to think through as best we could what the policy decision would look like. And what we've been able to do over time is, of course, build out the evidence base a lot. We don't have to speculate about what the long run labor market gains are going to be of deworming. We've measured them now for 20 plus years. Uh, the cost side is really clarified that the cost of these drugs has fallen a lot. You know, especially as programs are being implemented at scale around the world. So, you know, a lot of the things that we speculated about 20 years ago, we have really hard evidence on them now. And through open policy analysis, it can be presented clearly to partners and policymakers in a way uh, that can continue uh, allowing policymakers to make the best decisions for their population.